Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to our 360 degree virtual tour. My name is Andy Bauer. I'm one of the Lower Columbia Estuary Partnerships environmental educators, and I'll be showing you around the site today. This is a 360 degree tour, which means at any point you can click and drag your mouse across the screen and look in all directions. So let's give it a try. See if you can follow me over here. On this tour today, we're going to be crisscrossing the site, trying to show you special areas that illustrate all the work that's been going on in the last two years. Come on, let's get started. While I'm walking away, let's pause for a second. This is a high def video, and if things have been looking blurry, it might be because your internet is running slow or the image quality hasn't been set high enough. If you look at the bottom of the video screen, you'll see a gear icon. Click on that and adjust the quality setting up so you can get a better picture. Pause the video for a minute or two so your computer has time to load, and then press play again. Our first stop is the old diversion structure on Giddens Creek. The concrete structure controlled water coming across an elevated canal that took Gibbons Creek to the Columbia by way of a fish ladder. This disconnected the creek from its floodplain and made it difficult for migrating salmon to gain access to the creek. Furthermore, during floods, creek water spilled over into the port of Kamiswashugal's industrial park, putting it and other infrastructure at risk of flooding. In this video, you can see it being demolished. After demolition, this new channel was built, filled with large woody debris in preparation for holding Gibbons Creek after getting disconnected from the elevated canal. Thanks to years of hard work on this project, today, Gibbons Creek is flowing naturally down to Steigerwald Lake and the remainder of the floodplain for the first time in 50 years. This site will be planted with native plants to shade the creek, and by this time next year, will look similar to our next stop, just upstream from here on the north side of State Route 14. Last summer, this part of Gibbons Creek was under construction and looked like the lower section of the creek you just saw. But over the past six months, the native species that were planted last winter grew and the creek started meandering in and out of the large wood structures and gravel bars that were constructed in the new channel. Providing structure and space for the creek to adjust increases habitat value for fish like coho salmon, steelhead, and lamprey. The plantings will continue to grow, providing shade for the creek and food for the ecosystem here. Our next stop is downstream at the alluvial fan of Gibbons Creek. This is historically where Gibbons Creek met Steigerwald Lake, depositing sediment and organic materials like leaves that nourished the floodplain wetlands. Plantings of willows and other native species can be seen growing along the large wood that was also placed that year, and patches of wapato are beginning to re-establish themselves. Now that Gibbons Creek has been reconnected to the floodplain, it can once again choose its own meandering path across the floodplain and into the lake. From there, it will flow out to the Columbia River through new channels cut in the old levee system. During spring Columbia runoff and winter storms, this low area will be underwater, providing hiding and feeding places for juvenile salmonids and other native creatures. We're also looking forward to see what the beavers have in mind for this area. We have now moved south along Gibbons Creek across the elevated canal to where a temporary haul road crosses the creek. As you can see, our prime contractor, Rachi Incorporated, out of Vancouver, is busy moving material across the site. All of the materials to build the new setback levees comes from on-site, either from the demolition of 2.2 miles of old levee, or from borrow areas that are being graded and planted to become new floodplain wetlands. Moving 1.6 million cubic yards of soil requires a lot of diesel fuel. To keep the project carbon neutral and to improve site habitat for a wide variety of species, we're re-establishing 250 acres of riparian forest that occurred here historically. In roughly 20 years, those plantings will have sequestered about the same amount of carbon as we released during the construction of the project. Speaking of new wetlands, here we are at a 40-acre wetland that was constructed last year. Despite this year's drought and extreme heat, the plants are establishing and should continue to grow and mature through the years into an herbaceous wetland with pockets of willow for habitat diversity. We also place large wood for immediate habitat benefit. We expect many native species of waterfowl and salmonids to benefit from these new wetlands. Now we are driving along the old levee along the Columbia heading west. The old levee trail used to run right through here about 10 feet above our heads. However, we have been working all summer to remove that levee and it's almost gone. 
The old levee material is being used to create the new setback levees on the east and west of the site. We also will build a new trail system that starts at a new parking lot, meanders into and out of the refuge floodplain, and crosses two floodplain channels on new pedestrian bridges. In what was once a field of invasive reed canary grass and Himalayan blackberry rises the west setback levee. Now more than 30 feet tall, it's nearing completion and will tie in with the existing levee to protect the port of Camas Washougal's industrial park and portions of the city of Washougal from flooding. The trail from the new parking lot will run atop it with a great view into the refuge. A wind wave overbuild filled with native plants will extend to the east to naturally protect the levee from erosion. On the opposite side of the site, two and a half miles to the east, is the recently completed east setback levee. It protects farmland to the east of the refuge from flooding. It will also have a wind wave overbuild of plants and soil to protect it from erosion. The newly constructed dike trail will end just west of this setback levee. Well, that about does it for the tour. There's still a lot of work to be done before the refuge is open to the public again in 2022, including planting 300,000 native plants and finishing the trail system. Keep on the lookout for volunteer opportunities this winter to plant on the refuge. You can check the websites of the Lower Columbia Estuary Partnership and the Gord Refuge Stewards, COVID permitting. Have a great rest of your summer. Exactly.